In the past, I thought neutrals were overrated. I loved bright and bold colors, and you can tell that by all of my bright card making projects. But what I didn't realize is that neutrals can bring a whole new level of sophistication and beauty to your card making and crafting projects. And lately, I've been loving incorporating neutrals into my projects to tone down the brighter colors and complement them beautifully. So today, I'm so excited to announce that we're releasing four brand new lunar pastes in neutral tones to really help elevate your card making projects. Oh, and also, I can't forget we have this beautiful new layering stencil. It's a two-piece stencil that's going to create some beautiful winter village scenes. Now, I know it's small, but it's a mighty release, and I can't wait to share it with you. And by the way, everything that I'm sharing is available now. I'll leave it linked down below so you can check it out, and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here are the four brand new neutral lunar paste colors. We have Cookie Dough, Gur, Weeping Willow, and Shady. And each of these four neutrals are so helpful in rounding out and balancing the collection of lunar paste beautifully. Starting off, we have cookie dough, which is this light and bright ivory color. It's a nice warm and light neutral, and when you tilt it, it goes to this really beautiful pearly shine. There is so much shine on these, and what's so special about this is even though it's so light, you can still see all of that amazing color on both black and white cardstock. Lunar pastes are colored with a pearl powder instead of a dye, so that means that even when you put them on black cardstock, they are just as intense. And that's what I love so much about these lunar pastes. Moving on into Gur, we have this really nice warm, milky, mid-tone brown color. This is like the perfect chocolate brown color. I absolutely love it. And again, you can see I did this watch on black and white cardstock, so you can see how just how beautiful it is on both. Next, we have Weeping Willow, and this one is an absolute stunner. It is this dark, really rich brown color. It's so beautiful and intense, and you can see that it looks gorgeous both on the black and white cardstock, and when it shines, it really has my heart. This one is one of my favorites. And last but not least, we have this dark gunmetal gray color, which is called Shady, and again, it's a really nice, rich, and intense color when you look at it straight on, and then when you tilt it in the light, it has that really gorgeous and intense shine to it as well. And here they all are together. I absolutely love love how beautiful and shiny they are, and it gives you lots of options now when it comes to needing neutrals to mix into your projects. I'm excited to mix these into my collection, and I can't wait to see how you guys do it too. Now usually this is the part in the video where I take the new color and I compare it to old colors in the line that are similar to it, so you can see how different they are and decide if it's needed in your collection. But if I'm gonna be honest, there wasn't really any other neutrals in the line to compare it to. The only ones that are remotely close is the metallics, so here I'm gonna compare Shady to Silver Lining. Silver Lining is a super light silver color, really nice and bright, and when you get into Shady, it's much more of a gunmetal gray color, so different. And the only other thing that I thought of was that Gur looks a little bit similar to the metallic Gold Rush when they're in the jar. But again, when you swipe them onto cardstock, they are completely different. That Gur color is a nice milk chocolate brown color, like I was saying, and Gold Rush has a lot more of a yellow kind of brassiness to the color. So again, really completely different. They both serve a completely unique part to the line. And that's why these neutrals were really so necessary to add to the Lunar Paste line, because there was absolutely nothing like it. I heard lots of requests for neutral colors, so I'm finally bringing you guys four beautiful neutrals, and I hope you love them as much as I do. So if you guys haven't seen Lunar Paste before, I wanted to quickly walk you through the consistency of it. So when you open each jar of it, it's this really creamy and buttery smooth paste. I love this so much because it makes it really easy to spread across your surface and get smooth and seamless effects like this, and it spreads really well through a stencil design. But I also like that it's thick enough that you can kind of use your palette knife to create lots of texture like this, and it will dry with all of that insane texture on in it, which is so cool with this paste. And like I've been sharing, this is also colored with pearl powders, which makes it really nice and opaque, and it will really stand out against that black cardstock as well. So you can use it on many different colors and it won't affect the color of the paste. It'll stay nice and bold and true to color. One more of my favorite application methods is just using my finger, but you can also use a foam blending tool like you'll see later in today's video, and you can just swipe it across the surface of the cardstock to get really beautiful coverage. It's nice and thin though, which makes it a lot quicker to dry, but you still get all of that same intense color and shine even when you apply it thin like that. And same thing on the dark colored cardstock, you can just go in with your finger, apply it nice and thin, and still get all of that beautiful, rich, and intense color and shine. And when applied thick, it takes about an hour to dry, but once it's nice and dry, that shine becomes even more intense like you saw in the swatches earlier, and just so stunning. So I'll set these up to the side and let them dry. 
All right, next let's talk about this brand new layering stencil. This is called the Winter Scene Maker and there's two stencils inside of this layering set and it helps you create a scene that looks something like this. A really beautiful, cozy winter village scene. I'm so in love with how this stencil looks. So let's pull them out and check it out. This stencil has the positive and negative of those wonderful houses. This means you can blend the houses in and then use this top piece to mask them off. And then we maximized every section of the stencil. So on the interior of this stencil, it has a beautiful snow pattern or you can use it as confetti as well. Moving into the stencil, you get the positive and negative of this line of trees. Again, this makes it so you can blend the trees in and then use this top section to mask them off. Then on the interior, we have three different houses. These are the same as the houses on top, except they're blown up to be quite a bit larger. Now you also get the masks inside of here as well. These are just simply attached with little clear stickers and you're going to peel this off before your first use and keep these inside your packaging. We include these masks to make the stencil a bit more versatile or if you blend in the houses and you want to mask them off, you have them right inside of the set. And then we've also included a second layer for each one of the houses to stencil in their doors and windows using lunar paste or any ink on top of the houses. There's so many options in here to create lots of different scenes, whether you use it all together like we did on the package to create that beautiful winter scene, or you use different bits and pieces, whether you use the snow or the trees separately to get really cool effects on their own as well. Okay, let's dive in and create a project using this layering stencil. So I'm gonna use the stamp wheel for my stenciling and I'll bring in a piece of my Simon Hurley Create stark white cardstock and place it down into the stamp wheel. I love this sticky mat that's inside of here because it holds everything down really nicely. To start off, I'm gonna blend out a really beautiful nighttime sky and make it look like a sunset. So I'm gonna start off using a little bit of Over the Moon, which is this light yellow color. And I'm gonna start a little bit up from the bottom of the card and start blending my color on. Now here I'm blending it out using a domed foam blending tool. This is gonna help me get lots of color on the surface and also blend it out so there's no harsh marks. Next, I'm gonna move into a brighter pink color and here I'm using Prom Queen, again on my domed foam blending tool. I'm gonna to tap this off on the side of my craft sheet to just get a little bit softer of a color when we go onto the surface. So I'll add this color down and start blending it out in a stripe of color. Now you can see that color's a lot stronger than my first yellow over the moon color. So I'm gonna go back in using over the moon and that blending tool and just bring this color up a little bit higher into that pink. This is going to help soften out that little bit of a line and really merge them together nicely. So just going right over top and blending this color in a little bit more up into the pink. Then I'm gonna bring in this no diving color, go in with my domed foam blending tool and bring this down from the top into the pink. We want to overlap the pink a little bit as well because when we blend blue over top of the pink, it'll overlap and create a beautiful purple tone in between. And then we'll finish it off by blending out the rest of the blue up top. And again, if need be, you can go back in with the other colors like this pink color, bring it back in and help to blend it into that blue just a little bit more. If you want to, to make the top a little bit darker and add some more dimension, you can go in using a darker gray like Shady, and I'm just going to blend this right around the top to darken up that blue and make it look a little bit more like a nighttime sky right up at the top. And there we go, you have an absolutely stunning blend of color that looks gorgeous and it's going to make a really great sunset for a winter village. So for this first layer, I'm gonna add a line of trees at the bottom of the card. Now when you're using your Simon Hurley Create stencils, there's a side that's glossy and there's a side that's a little bit more matte. This matte side has a coating on it to make the stencil not clear. And these sticky mats are super sticky. So in order to make that coating not peel off the stencil, we want to use the glossy side facing down towards that sticky mat. I can then line up the trees and place them down. And when placing the stencil down, you add a little bit of pressure on either side, and it's just going to help adhere the stencil down so that it doesn't move while we do our blending. No tape necessary, and that's why I love these sticky mats. But to ensure we don't blend up into these windows, I'm just going to grab a little bit of mint masking tape and adhere it right over top of those openings to make sure we don't accidentally get ink over there. Then I'm going to bring in a fake plant and one of these large Altenew blending brushes to do our blending. I'll apply a little bit of ink onto here and then I'll start blending from the top of these trees down onto our card and it gives such a gorgeous color blend. And the reason why I switched over to a blending brush for this layer is because these trees have so many sharp edges and details and with the bristles of a brush, it gets into all those little details and gives you a really nice sharp and crisp image. So that's why I opted for a blending brush for this layer. 
All right, once we're done blending, we can easily remove that stencil. You can see we've got nice sharp edges to create that line of trees. For the next layer, I'll bring in the house stencil. And again, we're going to take the glossy side of the stencil and face it down towards the sticky mat. Then I'm going to line these up so that the point of the houses kind of meet in between the different trees that we have going on. And then once it's lined up, we can place it right down into the sticky mat to hold it in place while we do our blending. And again, to make sure this snow doesn't get blended out, we're going to take a little bit more of that mint masking tape and lay it down right over top of that snow. Now we really want these houses to stand out and be the star of the show and also cover up any of the ink that's underneath it. So here I'm going in using some jet black archival ink and I'm going to again use a domed foam blending tool to blend these out. And with these houses, I'm just gonna go in and tap my color onto the surface. This is going to give me the darkest and richest saturation of color. And also since there are these little areas, I don't want them to move. So by just pouncing up and down, we're not going to put any pressure on those areas of the stencil and break them. All right, then we'll follow down at the bottom and do the same thing all over this bottom edge. And then once we're done, we can lift off that layer and you have those really beautiful planted houses standing out at the bottom of the card. All right, now that jet black archival is a little bit more permanent than regular inks. So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of rubbing alcohol or you could also use archival stamp cleaner. And then I'll just go in and clean this off. Now it's going to stain the mat just a little bit. It's the same material as a photopolymer stamp. So it'll stain just as much as that does. So if you're worried about staining with those black inks, just do that step off of your mat. And then same thing with the stencil, I'm just gonna spray down a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And this should clean off a little bit easier than the photopolymer mat. And it'll go all nice and clean. All right, now in the spirit of being real with my mistakes here, I probably would have made these trees just a little bit higher behind those houses. So they peeked out a little bit farther up. But instead of just trashing this card, I'm gonna show you a way you can kind of fix your mistake. So we've got this one line of trees here, right? We started like this. Now I'm going to take this same tree line stencil and just shift it up a little bit so there's new trees in between that other row. Once you got that good and lined up, we're going to place it down into that sticky mat again. And we'll just go back in with that same ink and blending brush and blend out another layer of trees. This time I'm gonna go a little bit lighter though. So these trees look like they're a little bit more in the background. All right, and then once that's done, we can lift it off the surface and you can see that beautiful second row of trees. It fills out the card a little bit more and helps to make it look a bit more balanced. And now I really like how it looks. So I think it's important to kind of share those mistakes. So that if you do that same thing at home, I can show you how to fix it. Or if you just want those two lines of trees in general, you can definitely do that. All right, now to add the windows and doors down to the houses, I'm going back into that stencil. We're going to lay it glossy side down and I'm just going to line it back up with those houses. This time I'm using the top mask section of the stencil lines up perfectly and then we'll place it down into the mat to hold it all down. I'm gonna go in and reuse this piece of mint tape to hold it down and mask off that snow. Then I'll go in with a bit of lunar paste in the color Slippery and Wet and I love this yellowish gold color. I think it's gonna look great for those doors and windows. All you need to do is just take the tiniest little bit on your palette knife and spread it right over top of the doors and windows on those houses and it's going to do a really great job at coloring those in beautifully and making those houses really come to life with their lights on. We can then lift those off and you can see those beautiful doors and windows all stenciled in with that really bright and shiny lunar paste. And before we keep moving, anytime you use lunar paste, you want to spray it down with water really quickly before it dries and just wipe it off with a paper towel to clean it off of your stencils or tools. And once that's all dry, that little bit of lunar paste at the bottom shines really nice and bright and adds a nice finishing touch to those houses. All right, lastly, to finish this off and make it look like the perfect winter scene, we need to add a little bit of snow to the card. So I'm gonna bring in the tree stencil first. I'm going to flip it over so the matte side is facing up again. And then I'm going to place this right down over top of that top tree line so that it lines up perfectly. And then again, we'll bring in a little bit of mint tape to hold down the stencil and make sure it doesn't move. And we'll also use a little bit of that tape to mask off any of the excess houses that we're not doing any blending through. Once those trees are nice and masked off, we can go in using that snow stencil, line it up at the top of the card there, and it should go down just far enough to meet those trees really nicely. And I'm also going to bring in more mint tape at the bottom here, because there's some open areas in those houses there that I just want to tape and mask off. 
Now to add in our snow, I'm gonna use a little bit of cookie dough and this is the perfect neutral for that snow color. It's a little bit warmer than just a regular white, but it still has all that beautiful pearly shine in it, which I think is going to look beautiful on this background. So I'm gonna go in using my palette knife from the paste tool set and just grab quite a bit of that paste and glob quite a bit of it at the bottom of the snow there. Then I'm gonna go in with the scraper tool also from that paste tool set and I'm just going to take it at the bottom of this paste and swipe it going upwards to really fill in the rest of that stencil design. And you wanna swipe your paste going away from that tree stencil because it's double layered down here. We don't want to push any paste down into those trees. So just swiping it upward until we got a nice coverage on there and a good layer of snow on those trees. Then this is why we used so much because it makes it really easy to swipe across and then all we need to do is take any of the excess and put it right back in the jar so there's no waste when we're doing that. All right, then when we lift off the stencil, you get that really beautiful blended snow across the background. And next we'll lift off that tree stencil and you can see that those trees have been perfectly masked off by that snow. So that's why it was so important for me to include both the positive and negative of the trees and houses so you can mask things off as well. And one thing I love so much about Lunar Paste as well is that it's heat staple. So I'm gonna go in here with my Ranger heated craft tool and just go evenly across the paste to help along with the drying process. And you wanna keep your heat tool moving across the surface so there's an even heat and so the paste doesn't bubble as you dry it. But this really helps speed along the process. So if you're impatient like me, it's a perfect tip. And you can see once that's nice and dry, that cookie dough lunar paste has the perfect amount of pearly shine and it makes that snow look so beautiful. All right, then I'm gonna take this card panel and adhere it down onto a top folding stark white card base. Here I'm using the Barely Arts liquid glue that I've refilled inside of this Misty glue press. And this has been really awesome. It makes it super easy to squeeze glue out and it also gives you a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that everything's perfectly centered when you're adhering it onto your card. Okay, then I'm gonna dive back into this Winter Wonderland stamp set for some sentiments. I released a lot of Christmas stuff back in July of this year, so definitely go back and check that all out as well. It really rounds out the whole collection, and that's why I didn't throw out a ton of new Christmas stuff right now either. So inside of here, there's a lot of great sentiments like wishing you a season full of love and laughter, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. I think I'm gonna use the there's no place like home for the holiday sentiment though, that seems to fit along with this perfectly. So I'm gonna do some heat embossing for this sentiment. I'll use a little bit of anti-static powder tool to make sure nothing sticks where we don't want it to. And then I'll go in using Versamark Clear Sticky Ink and I'm going to ink up my sentiment and stamp this right down onto my black cardstock. Then I'll go in with my white heat embossing powder Sprinkle that right over top of the sentiment and tap off any of the excess. Then I'll heat set this until it's nice and bright white. All right, then for the sentiment, I'm gonna go in and fussy cut it out using my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. I'm leaving a little bit of a border all the way around the sentiment and sort of rounding the corners to give it a nice finished look. Then I'll pop the sentiment up on some foam tape right underneath those houses and it blends into that black blending really beautifully. I love how this card turned out with that really stunning sunset blending and that great little village of houses at the bottom. I also loved how we added that second row of trees. Honestly, it was a little bit of a mistake, but from now on, I think I'm always gonna add two rows because I love the depth and dimension it adds to the card. And of course, finishing it off with that snow up top using that new cookie dough lunar paste really makes it shine bright and finishes off that card so well. All right, now let's jump into some more stenciling, but this time I'm going to pair some brighter colors along with the neutrals to show you how they can make really sophisticated color palettes. For this, I'm going to use the layered stencil called Dazzling Diamonds, and this is a three-piece layering stencil that creates a really beautiful geometric design. I'm gonna, again, use my stamp wheel to do the stencil, and I'll stick down my stark white cardstock right in the center. Then I'll start off with the first layer of the stencil, and in the corners it's etched with a little number so you know which direction is correct when you're lining these up. Now I'm going to flip this over so that the glossy side is facing down towards that sticky mat again. I'll center this up on my card and then I'll stick it down into place by pressing down all of the edges to make sure it's nice and stuck even with no tape. All right, then for a nice Christmas green color, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of fake plant. And again, I'm using a large Altenew blending brush to blend out this color because it covers lots of surface area at once, so it'll make it a lot quicker to blend out this design. And I'm also using a blending brush because like I told you earlier, there's a lot of crisp edges and corners in this stencil, so the bristles of a blending brush are going to get into all those little details and give me nice, sharp blending. 
All right, then we'll lift that stencil off and you can see that really nice, beautifully blended out design. All right, then moving on to the next stencil, I'm going to flip this over so the glossy side is facing downwards again. And this should line up right in between those little areas and it has just the perfect little space for those diamonds to fit into the design. We'll adhere this down onto the surface of my sticky mat. Now for this layer, I'm gonna use a little bit of Weeping Willow, this nice dark chocolate brown color. I have been loving browns and tans with green, so this is going to make such a beautiful design. Gonna take quite a bit out using my palette knife from the paste tool set. I'll spread it at the bottom of my stencil here. Again, you want a lot more paste down at the surface than you actually need. Then I'm gonna take the scraper tool, again from my paste tool set, start at the bottom here, and I'm going to just carry this all the way up and spread it right through that stencil. Really super easy to do, especially since we had lots of paste down there. And then I'll take it at more of an upward angle like this and just scrape off the design of that stencil. That will collect all of the lunar paste and make it nice and smooth on our design. Then I can take any of the excess, scrape it right off my tool and put all of it back into the jar so there's absolutely no waste. Then I'll peel this stencil off the surface and you can see that really beautifully sharp stencil design in that Weeping Willow color. And when you're working with lunar paste on the stamp wheel, you just wanna spray a little bit of water down and clean it off while it's still wet with a little bit of paper towel so that your mat stays nice and clean and stays sticky. All right, then again, to speed along in the process, I'm gonna bring in my heat tool and just heat set this layer so that we can stencil the next layer on top without it messing anything up. All right, once that's dry, you can see that beautiful chocolate brown shine once we tilt it in the light, but we're not finished yet. So let's put this right back down into our stamp wheel so we can do our last layer of stenciling. Lastly, we'll go in with this large diamond stencil to complete the design, and again, flip it so that the glossy side is facing down towards the sticky mat, and the diamonds should line up perfectly in between the rest of that design. And for this layer, I'm gonna use a little bit of cookie dough lunar paste, and again, I love these kind of tans and neutral colors along with a brighter and bolder color like that green. It just looks so beautiful and sophisticated together. And then again, we'll bring in that scraper tool and go right in to pull that paste all the way up. To disperse the paste onto the design, you want to go at kind of a sideways angle like this, and that'll get the paste all the way across the surface. And then to collect the paste and smooth it out, you wanna go at more of an upward angle. This is going to pull any paste off and even it out across the design. Then you'll take any of the excess paste that's on your tool. I like to add a lot more than I actually need because it makes it easier to spread across the design. And of course, you can put it right back in the jar once you're done. And once that's done, we'll lift this right off of our stamp wheel. And you can see that design is beautifully stenciled in with these lunar pastes and inks. And once that's all dry, check out the gorgeous shine you get from both the Weeping Willow and Cookie Dough pastes. They really stand out beautifully on this card. And usually I would do red and green, but sometimes that can look a little bit cheesy. So this gives a little bit more of a sophisticated looking Christmas vibe to the card. All right, now to finish off this card, I'm gonna use the ornaments from the Retro Holiday Stamp Set. I love the vibe of this, and I think it'll match this background perfectly. To create a little window for the ornaments, I'm gonna use this large circle die and cut it out of my cardstock. But instead of doing it from the center, I've decided to move the die off the edge because I think it's gonna add a little bit more interest to the card. I'll hold it in place using a bit of mint tape and then we'll run this right through my die cutting machine. So now we've cut out our little window and what's really cool about this is you can use both sides. You can use this piece for a whole nother card. Now let's stamp down these ornaments. So I'll go in with the outline image of the ornaments and there's also three of those solid images that help to color the ornaments in really easily. So I'll stamp down these ornaments in a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to ink this up and this will give us a nice crisp jet black image when we stamp it down. Perfect. And there's also this Happy Holidays stamp too, which I'm going to stamp out that sentiment right away. I love that sort of scripty and playful font that's in. Since that ink takes a little bit longer to dry, we'll go in with a layer of clear heat embossing powder and dump it over the top. This is going to help seal that in and give it a glossy look. So I'm gonna heat set this until it's nice and shiny. All right, then to do the rest of my stamping, I'm going to place this inside of my Misty stamping tool. And there's a waffle flower grip mat inside of here. So this is going to help hold it down, even though it's a little bit warped from heat embossing, it'll hold it in place nicely while we do the rest of our stamping. And like I said, to do this stamping, there's some solid ornament images. You just have to line that up right over the top of those images, and then we'll pick it up with our Misty door so we can easily do our stamped coloring. For these two ornaments, I'm gonna go in using fake plant, so we'll keep that green color going throughout the card. I'm going to ink both of these ornaments up at the same time, and then we can stamp them right down onto our cardstock. Now what I love about the Misty is you can go in and add more color and shading if you want to. So I'll add another layer of ink here to stamp those a little bit more solid. And then we can also use these little detail Altenew blending brushes to just go in and add shading to one side of the image. So I'm just going to pounce on a little bit more of that green ink 
and this is just going to give a shadow to one side of these ornaments. And I'll do several layers just like that to really make it stand out and give it some dimension. Then I'll go in with the next stamp to color in these images. Again, just line it up right over top of that ornament. And then once that's in place, we can again pick it up with the lid. For this one, I am gonna bring in a little bit of red. So I'm gonna go in with Love Struck and ink this up. And then we can stamp it right down to our card. And then to add some shading with this one, I'm gonna go in with its darker counterpart, Game Over. And this is going to do a great job at shading that one side of the ornament. So again, going in with another Ulta New Detail blending brush and shading the one side of the ornament by pouncing on some ink. And again, we'll do several layers just like this to really build that color up and give it some more depth and dimension to the image. All right, then I'm gonna go into the coordinating dies to cut these out, and I'm just going to grab that ornament image, and you wanna line it up with an even white border all the way around the image. That'll make it cut out nice and even, and then we'll use a little bit of mint tape to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, I'll place this right down, and you guys know I gotta do it at some point in today's video, and do a little bit of awkward die cutting. We'll run this slow and steadily through the die cutting machine while I just stare right at you the whole time. Make it real awkward. And then when we pop this out, you get that really great ornament image that cut out just perfectly. All right, then with that sentiment, I'm gonna go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors and fussy cut all the way around it. Again, just leaving that little white border all the way around. And this helps to give that sentiment a nice finished look by following along those lines instead of just leaving it on a large rectangle of cardstock. To do this, I'm using my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. I love to use these because they spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired while you're fussy cutting. And also because of that, I find that it gives you a lot smoother of a cut line as you're going throughout the image because you're not having to do the action of opening them yourself. All right, then let's get the card base ready. I'm gonna use this dark brown card base, but I want to add a little bit of Weeping Willow to give it some shading and depth and dimension around the edges. If you guys have seen lots of my videos, you know I love to do this. It really just brings the card to life and adds lots of dimension to the edges. And by making the edge of the cardstock darker like this and blending on some extra color, it'll naturally draw your eye to the center of the card, which is lighter, and that's where our focal point is gonna be. Now I also wanna add this color around the circle, so I'm just gonna make a little pencil line there that I can follow, and I'm gonna put my blend inside there. So just bring it around that circle and still keep the center of that nice and light, but it just will add more depth and dimension even to that area. That looks perfect. And what I love about this so much too is we used Weeping Willow here and this dark brown color is Weeping Willow, so it matches really nicely. I love that each one of the neutrals we released also has a coordinating ink pad, so you can really use them together to create some great coordinated color projects. So I'm just going to slip in those ornaments and place them down on some foam tape right here. Then again, I'll go back in with my glue press, add glue all the way around this card panel. And I'll place this down onto the card and hold it in place while it dries. All right, then I'll line up my sentiment down in the center on the bottom and pop it up on some foam tape for some dimension. And that finishes it off beautifully. I love the shine of that background with those neutrals, but it doesn't take away from the card too much because the colors aren't too bold or intense. Mixing in the green with the neutrals is beautiful and sophisticated and bringing in those retro ornaments to finish off the card was such a fun holiday touch. It's so gorgeous. I love how it turned out. All right, for this next card, I'm gonna do some more stenciling. This time I'm using the Sunrays layering stencil, and we're gonna turn this into kind of a cool candy swirl design. So I'll pull this out. It's two layers inside of this stencil. And I'm gonna start off with the first layer, which has Sunrays number one etched in the bottom of it. And I'll place this right down onto my card project. I'm gonna line it up exactly how I want it on my card. And then I'll use a little bit of mint tape to hold it in place while we do our stencil blending. And also I'm doing this on craft cardstock to get more of a kind of retro look. I didn't want necessarily a stark, super bright white background for this one. All right, now I'm gonna do some blending using lunar paste and I wanna create kind of a palette of color that I can lift off of. So I'm starting off with a little bit of bee sting, going in again with that palette knife and I'm just going to swipe this onto my scraper and do a really thin layer. We don't want too much paste at all, no globs, and just lay down a little bit that we can pull from. Then I'll go in using my foam blending tool and I'm just going to dip the foam right into that bee sting color. Now this is why you only want a little bit because a little bit goes a long way. You can see that it's sitting on that surface but there's no globs of color there. 
that's what you want. You don't want too much paste, otherwise it'll seep underneath the stencil. Then I can go right in onto my project and start doing blending in circular motions all the way around. Dip back into the lunar paste when we need to, and then again, we can start the blending right onto our project. Now you could go all the way to the edge or you can kind of fade it out. I think I'm gonna kind of softly fade it out. So just kind of blend down a little bit close to the edge, but let it fade a little bit as we go out. And these lunar pastes kind of soften and blend nicely to give that beautiful faded look. Go back in, and one thing I do also love about these is that even though we're on top of this craft card stock, when you layer it up, you get that really beautiful opaque look from these pastes, which is super awesome, because like I said, there's no dye in here. Each one is colored with specific pearl powders, so that's why it's able to shine and keep all of its color on top of dark colored card stocks. All right, then we'll lift that stencil right off the surface, and you can see that really beautifully stenciled, crisp design with that sunray stencil. All right, then again, we want to heat set this in between layers, and now since we applied it so thin, here, this should dry really quickly. Even though we applied it so thin, it's still got all that amazing opacity and shine. All right, and now when it comes to these sponges, you actually want to remove them from the tool. They have just a little bit of Velcro and take them underneath the sink to wash them out. Or you can just kind of spray them down with water and you just want to rub them on a paper towel until they come completely clean. You can see it's pretty easy to get lots of that color out of here. But if you leave that color in to dry, it's going to harden and get really crispy and you won't be able to use it next time. So make sure to clean them out in between use. All right, next I'm gonna go in with the Sunrays number two stencil. Going to lay this right over top of the design and you can see that it will really easily line up in the center of each one of those stripes. And then again, we're able to go in using that mint tape to hold this stencil down into place while we do our blending. All right, then for this layer and to complete that candy stripe look, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of cookie dough, that really great neutral kind of ivory color, lift a little bit out with my palette knife, and then again, I'll put a really thin layer onto my scraper to act as a nice palette to lift the color from. Then I can go in with my sponge, dip this right in to pick up that color. Again, you'll see that color on my sponge, but there's not like globs of color onto here. Once we've got that color on there, we can start from the center again and start blending outwards. And again, you just want to sort of kind of fade that color towards the edge, but I'm not going all the way off the edge. I like that sort of retro and vintage look that you get from just fading it off back into that craft cardstock color. All right, then I can lift off this layer of the stencil and you'll see that design is completed perfectly. And again, it's got that sort of retro look with the craft card stock underneath. And check that out once it's dry. It's so beautiful with all of that intense shine from both the bee sting and cookie dough lunar paste together. All right, to finish off this card, I'm gonna use the Silly Santa stamp set. I love this one. These kind of retro looking Santas are so much fun. I'm gonna use this one up here that's carrying those gifts. All right, then to do this stamping, I'm gonna use a little bit of Love Struck, which is this sort of bright berry red color. I'm going to ink up my Santa image. Then I'll use a little bit of Game Over and sort of roll it onto the edge to add a little bit of shading to one side of the Santa image. Then we'll stamp it down onto our Stark White cardstock. Perfect, I love how that looks once it's all stamped out. And the really cool part about this too is you don't need to do any extra coloring because that stamping is quite solid and fills everything in with lots of color. Cut this out, I'll go into the coordinating die set from Spellbinders and pick out the Santa image that coordinates. I'll lay this right over top of the image and give a nice even white border all the way around and use a little bit of mint tape to hold it down while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, and when I pop that out, it gives a nice even white border all the way around the image and we didn't even have to take any of the extra time to cut it out. That's what I love about coordinating dies. All right, then for the sentiment, I'm gonna do a little bit of heat embossing. So I'm gonna use my anti-static powder tool on my craft cardstock. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Versamark clear sticky ink and ink up the sentiment. Here I'm using the sentiment that says Santa Claus is coming to town and I'll stamp it right down onto my craft cardstock, giving it some good pressure. Then I'll throw a little bit of white heat embossing powder over top of that sentiment and tap off any of the excess. Then I'll heat set this till it's nice and bright white. Then I'll go in with my Fiskars spring assist scissors and fussy cut all the way around the sentiment. And again, I'm leaving a little bit of a border all the way around and this just gives a really nice finished look to that sentiment. All right, then I'll add down the sentiment using a little bit of foam tape. And I wanna use an action wobbler behind the Santa, but this one is a little bit large, so it's gonna be peeking out of the Santa a bit too much. They make smaller ones, but I don't have them in my craft room. But one thing you can do is just go in with a scissors and just cut a little bit of this plastic area off of the action wobbler. 
All right, so I've chopped this down to make it a little bit smaller and I think it should fit perfectly now. So I'm just going to adhere this right behind the Santa image, giving it some good pressure. And then I'll peel off the backer sheets and we'll add this down front and center onto our card as well. I love that those candy stripes are sort of radiating out the Santa. It really draws all the focus and attention straight to him. And that action wobbler really gives it tons of dimension and also allows that Santa to shake and wobble on the front of that card, which I think is so fun and playful. I love this one. I can't wait to send it to a friend. And the great part about this action wobbler too is that it collapses down. So if you put it through an envelope, it's not too bulky and it'll still fit inside of there and then when it opens up it'll kind of spring into action. All right friends I hope you really enjoyed this video as I walk you through the four new neutral lunar pastes and that really fun new winter scene maker layering stencil. Like I said everything is listed and linked down below so you can check it out and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Also down there, be sure to leave a comment letting me know which card and product is your favorite from today's release. I always love chatting with you guys down there. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending time with me today, and I'll see you all very soon for another card baking and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.